Kieran Mullen, you were here uh, to look ahead, obviously, to Liverpool v, v Arsenal. But a few things uh, before that. In part one, we're going to talk about the international breaks, uh, assessing the damage, uh, if that is the case uh, for Liverpool, but also the reaction of some of our players as well as others and a reminder sort of what international football uh, does mean uh, outside uh, of our little Liverpool bubble. Uh, we've also got a couple of inserts. Uh, we've got Forbes stuff, uh, which I did half an hour ago. Uh, so it's very fresh indeed. Um, he's from Red Neighbours talking about the LFC Operation Christmas Magic. And uh, Football with Ben, which is an Instagram account. Um, young Ben came in and had a chat with me about his Instagram um, page and what he's doing there. Uh, go around the grounds and doing some lives around football. Uh, so that is all to come. And then obviously we'll be previewing that massive game on Saturday at half five against Arsenal. But I'll start with you, um, Keo. It's, it's always a tense time, isn't it? Internationals, you, 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 every twinge um gets analyzed every little knock suddenly all over twitter he's gone off he's broke his leg and all this and it's just a, a bit of a time where you just i know you seem to be fingers crossed and, and seemingly knowing who's playing at two in the morning and where and how they're getting on well that's it and you mentioned there what it means to the rest of the country compared to liverpool fans or maybe the rest of the world but it just becomes an exercise in watching who's injured for us and making sure <laughs> nobody come, comes back with, 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 a, with an injury that's too bad I say, I mean, someone sent me a link to the game man he was playing. I just seen the pitch and was like, oh no, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, and he did end up going off in the end. So yeah, it is. I mean, I'm a bit hypocritical with it because when the, when the World Cup comes around and the Euros come around and to international football, three games a day and all that, I'm like, that yes, this is great, yeah. but international breaks and qualifiers, it's just put no time <laughs> whatsoever because it usually means that there's a Liverpool player coming back injured. Yeah, the, the, there was a few um, to keep uh, social media lively, Phil. Uh, a few sorts of happening. There's a, there was an Andy Robertson twinge. There was the Marnie one that, that, that Kieran sort of t- t- talked about there. Jordan Henderson getting sent home early, but it, it seems like nothing sort of too bad anyway. The Henderson one felt a little bit sort of blag to me in that he released five, and I thought, well, it can't be five of them injured. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I mean? Uh, Marnie was back training and smiling and, and and things like that. It's only really the Andy Robertson one that feels like it might be something, and even that, he's still sort of touch and go for Arsenal. Yeah, we've gone full circle on Robertson, really, haven't we? Because if you go back sort of 18 months, two years, if he'd have come back and he'd have been the one who was injured, you'd have been in serious trouble about what you were thinking about who was playing left back at the weekend. But now it's it's not. He's, he's almost the the least of the problems with mm. when you look at the cover. I mean, obviously, I don't want him to be injured and I'd happily have him playing, but it's sort of, it's it's not as dangerous as it felt like Henry- he has the he has the closest like for like cover yeah, probably, arguably in this yeah. arguably in the squad that's, now maybe for me for Jota. yeah that's basically what i mean i mean i'm to be honest i don't think Mane was injured at all you know i think it was a, a convenient one so because he, they'd already qualified hadn't they and he plays 20 minutes the first game and then doesn't play the second game and it's like you know is that just his way of going i, I, I didn't want to play but i had to and this is my way out and everyone's happy because you know, Senegal don't care. They're going to the, the next stage of the qualification, and he's home having his feet up, and he's ready to go for Saturday. It's going to be some lively um, African Cup knockout games, by the way, Phil. Well, uh, what we want is Egypt Algeria again. It happened about ten years ago, and I think it was like like a war on the pitch because they absolutely hate each other. So we can get that again. It's great. Love a mad rivalry you didn't yeah. know about. Love a mad rivalry you didn't know about. There we are. Um, Egypt Algeria. We'll go, Phil. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Get in, <laughs> <laughs> Dan. I mean, we would. I mean, me and Kevin were talking a little bit there about you know the, the Liverpool thing versus the rest of the country, but also obviously the rest of the world. But also, you know, the, the players feel differently about it to what we do, and we need to accept that and 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 not just accept it, but but sort of embrace it in a way. You know, um, I shared a tweet round to you guys before in the agenda about Virgil Van Dijk, where he's. He's, you know, he's he's overjoyed with the qualification. He's he's it's it'll be his first big tournament if he if he's fit. He's 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 either missed out before or, or Holland out. You know, it's it's a World Cup. You know, it's it's what you know kids dream of. We you know sort of playing in it's 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 you know a market that professional football set themselves and he's got there really. And there's quite a few images over the last week or so. You know, that's them Serbian celebrations were absolutely unreal. Yeah, it helps them and was on the floor crying. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? I'm not made of stone. But um, you know, with those Serbian boys just absolutely, you know, you know, going mad and stuff. And you know, it is it is, I don't know, almost a pure football in, in a lot of sense, really. And it is a reminder that yeah, just because it's not a big deal for you, it doesn't mean that that's the case for everyone. Oh, I haven't got that. 
It's on mute, isn't it? I think. Do I just want to carry on? We're good. That the Serbia stuff was good, though, wasn't it? When Go on, were, Phil. When they were just like they were. That was the most excited I think I've ever seen a football team. They were. I don't think I've ever seen that many people in the corner celebrating a goal of you. There was about, it looked like there was 60 of them. Like every single Serb in Portugal was in the corner of that ground. And you, you do forget at times that, all right, we're not sort of emotionally involved, but to a lot of countries, this is the best way of showcasing their country on, on, a, on a stage like that. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. And, and for Virgil, Phil, you know, it's 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 obviously sort of a huge moment for him. And you think about everything he's won, but internationally, you know, it's 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 you know no big moments yet. And he obviously feels like this could be one for him. You but, know, fitness allowing. I mean, you look at if you actually look at the teams who've got a chance of winning this World Cup. I think there probably aren't ten, and Holland's are one of them. He's the captain, so there's a serious chance that in what for uh, thirteen months' time, Virgil Van Dijk's running around Qatar with the, with the World Cup. And a World Cup winners medal. It's um, why wouldn't you be excited if you were him? It's it's something you have to be all in on. And footballers can talk about this, that, and the other, but the World Cup probably does matter to them mm. as much as anything. I would say. Yeah, no, I think they have got a good chance. I remember watching the Euros and thinking, you know, yeah. watching Holland, thinking if they have Virgil Van Dijk here, they'd be great. <laughs> a manager who can actually probably do something as well this time because I think the upgrade <laughs> from De Boer to Van Gaal is probably. Going to be quite good for them as well. <laughs> we shall see. Have we got Daniel. Are you still struggling? No, uh, never mind. Uh, if only we could have sound checked before. Um, anyway, um, Kieran, in terms of, you know, as you say, looking at what, what it means to the players, you know, Andy Robertson sort of summarizes that more, more than anyone really, doesn't he? In terms of, you know, you can see when he's, when he's played for Scotland, sort of what it means to him really. And, you know, it, it might have cost them, you know, this 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 game. But I think, you know, supporting these lads through that, they, they, they sort of remember it, really. Yeah, I mean, I think we all, when when we're watching tournaments, I mentioned before about being a big fan of, you know, international tournaments. And I'm usually looking for Liverpool players and looking and rooting for them, do you know what I mean? And not only that as well, I think we want to see the best players in, on, in, on the international stage when we are watching these tournaments and... I think the, the world of football want to see Van Dijk playing against the best ciphers in the world and, and stuff like that. So not only does it mean a lot for the actual players and what, what, what it can do for the you know the club careers, it's it, it's good it's good all around for people who are watching international football because it can come under fire, can't it? But when, they, when the best players are playing in them games and you've got tasty fixtures, like Phil was saying before, let me be full of stars to the players that want to the exact game of the best players in the world. That's yeah um in terms of the time then um, the three premier league clubs have, have used this time to, to to get new managers in uh phil which is a you know an interesting one there's one in particular um uh, gerald to aston villa which is um you know particular interest but for our manager how do you think they'll have used the time because you know, there was an interesting article from Paul Ghost in the Echo, which would encourage people to read, talking about uh, the international break. And, you know, it's a bit of an update on, on who's gone where and how they've sort of got on and things like that. But also talks about how Jürgen Klopp's likely to use the time and on the training pitch. And, you know, there's, there's some players who haven't been away who you think the time might be useful for, the likes of Thiago, the likes of Matip, you know, getting them, you know, as as, 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 as raring to go as, as possible, sort of, you know, in this game. You know, players like Chamberlain as well who aren't involved. Um but also it talks about the younger players as well and the opportunities that they get um, to to train with, you know, first team players and, and obviously the opportunity for the likes of Jürgen to have a bit more of a look at them. And it all helps the fact that they're all one, under one roof now with the exit. Yeah, you'd think he's having a little bit of a recharge with batteries, isn't it? Because it's, what is it? Yeah. It's going to be four months until he can have a, is it three months or four months? It's probably three, isn't it? Until, well, it's, oh, it's only the end of January because there's a mad international break at the end of January now, isn't it? Um so he has only got two months, but it gives him a chance to have a little bit of a break because he's going to be going. It's the, the schedule, particularly if we get through in the next round of the League Cup, is brutal effectively until the end of until the end of January now, isn't it? So he's probably also having a look at, at what went wrong against Brighton and West Ham as well, and trying to figure out if there's anything that he feels he got wrong that contributed towards that, and looking at fixing that, and just coming up with new things and, and plans, and probably. As mad as it sounds, picking the next seven or eight teams because yeah, possibly he, if you can be organised like that, it knows exactly how you get need to sort of have the players day in day out preparation if they need to 
particular day off. They need to do a particular type of session and, and so on and so forth. I think there's the problem. It, it was a good time for them, I think, because it was when you actually go back and look at the games we played over that last period, there was a lot of hard games. It's playing Atletico Madrid twice, playing Manchester United, playing West Ham, we're a good side, playing Brighton, who are a side who can do the things to us that we probably don't like doing. It was it was hard. And now he's had the chance to sort of regroup, gather himself, go again and and look. Because this is the next six weeks, I think, is vital for the entire season. If we go well the next six weeks, we'll be in position in May. No, absolutely. Um, Dan, you're getting called handsome in the comments, but can we hear you? I hope so, mate. Hey! I hope so. Hey. Dan, say, say whatever you like about anything we've talked about, mate. You probably got notes. Desperate to jump in. <laughs> Phil's chat and shy. Be tell him. <laughs> Forget about how I look, I can't operate the sound on this, so uh, I'm not up to much regardless. Um, I think in general, yeah, a few things there. Obviously, the lads have done a lot of heavy lifting in the early part of the show. Um, I think in terms of the, the the point about players going away at certain times, I think is really important because we often look at it as a negative and, and we often think, you know, at a result like West Ham, we want to get back on the pitch straight away. I think sometimes, you know, the ability for Virgil, for example, to go away and have that experience means he probably comes back in a better mindset um, instead of just rolling into a next game. And, and you can have the, like I say, you can have the, the the mindset that you might have wanted to go and put it right. But you can come back into to Kirby a little bit fresh, and I think a few of them might do the same after that West Ham result. It gives the the management and the coaches a, a chance to look at the tapes properly and maybe implement a couple of other bits in training, which again we don't hear of. Um, and I think it'll be really interesting reaction from Liverpool. I think I think in terms of you know injuries and just where the squads are in general, I think if there's one they'll be really disappointed about. I think it'll be one that isn't from the international break. I think it'll be Curtis. I think they either really wanted him over the next few weeks for games like Porto and AC Milan, and for something so innocuous as a as an eye injury that seems like a really weird one, which I think they even referenced it as being. Um, I think that's one that will just be a bit of a blow to them and he's a player you would want to run for certain games I think in this next block so it'll be about getting a little bit of luck I think with making sure no one else uh, ends up ends up injured in, in in whatever circumstance really but I think we need we need a bit of Thiago coming to the fore and getting a bit of rhythm I think definitely Yeah, absolutely, absolutely you know, look at it you know, we've we talked a little bit about this next group of games, Kieran. You know, Dan sort of mentioned it there. Phil's talked about it. You know, sort of planning for it. You know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves too much. You know, we'll, we'll talk about the Arsenal game in a minute, and and that's you know the the, the, the focus. You know, for, for the players and and I guess for us supporters as well. But the, they'll know that it's a big period. Um, you know, in terms of the management, Jürgen, Jürgen and, and his team, there a big period coming up, which, as Phil says, sort of defines whether you're there or thereabouts in, in May or not. You know, you can't lose. You know, so you can't win a league every four Christmas, but you can certainly lose one. We just need to make sure that we're sort of handily placed as well as possible in, in January. And, you know, to be fair, we, we, we normally go well at uh, this period. You know, December's been been good for us and you hope that hopefully this will be the same. Is he frozen there? Oh, my lost kid. Um, trying to get back in. Yeah. We'll have a break. We're having a few uh, technical issues, so we'll have a little break there. Um, coming up, um, as I say, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about um, Arsenal. We're looking ahead to the Arsenal game, and we've got the interns now, uh, which if you listen on a podcast, all you will hear. Uh, we've got Forbes stuff on the LFC Operation Christmas Magic and also uh, Football with Ben. So enjoy that, and we'll be back to look ahead to Arsenal. Right, uh, yeah, I'm just coming in. I've marked that time down, so we're all right. Hi, everyone who's watching this publicly. <laughs> uh, I think it was a bandwidth issue because um, of a little mark, but it seems to be okay now. So, uh, do you want to? I'll give it 10 seconds and then we'll come back in. Yeah? Cool. So. All right, cool. All right. So, it won't do the counter suit. If you just count, as soon as my camera goes, if you just, just count yourself back in, John, okay? Great. All right, cool.
And we're back. I think we're back. It's John Gibbons. I'm still joined by uh, Kate Molyneux, by Phil Blundell, and by Dan Morgan. And to look ahead uh, to Liverpool v Arsenal. And Hannah Snell has been on. Uh, Hannah says, why has nobody mentioned Arsenal's fifth from set pieces? It's because we haven't talked about Arsenal yet. Uh, get off our <laughs> bell. Back, but Phil, talk about Arsenal's fifth from set pieces. Make Hannah's happy. <laughs> Uh, they didn't score in the last game from set piece because they beat Watford one 0 didn't they? And that was Smith Rose from outside the box, so that's not quite right, I don't think. But yeah, they've they, they scored. I think Gabriel scored one at Leicester, didn't he? Um, and that mm-hmm. you do that in the first ten minutes away at Leicester, it's a huge help. Like set pieces, it was. I think it was. If you look at the difference between us in eighteen, nineteen, and 19, uh, sorry, nineteen twenty, and then the catastrophe that was last season, we scored a lot of goals from set pieces in nineteen twenty. Like Van Dijk probably wins wins us games just by scoring early doors and it gets you in a position where where you can sort of without playing well you can score a goal because all you need to do is the ball go out of play somewhere vaguely near their goal you put a ball you put a good, good ball in and we've got some of the best best delivery around in, in Trent and Robertson and whatever you can you can you can make an edge just by without playing well and that's something that Arsenal need to look to do because I always think that when they're uh, Anfield sort of where Arsenal come to die, I think, isn't it? When you look at the sort of the last five to ten years, like the five one in two thousand and fourteen, beating four 0 when Salah had just signed, there was a five one a couple of years ago, and uh, it feels like there's a lot of talk about have Arsenal come back from the dead. I'm not going to believe it until I see them come to Anfield and do something because it, it's like where it must be a psychological thing around the around the neck that they they need to to get over. Yeah, 2014, I think they were top of the league. They definitely had the best defensive yeah. record in the league uh, when they came to Anfield and were 4-0 down within 19 minutes. Uh, what a lovely, lovely day um, that was. You expected a, a day just as nice, Dan, or do you think it would be a bit tougher? I think it could cut loose. I think I, I really That's do. That's what I, I want to hear. 5-0 yeah, up in 19. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I think I think it's, it's such an unpredictable fixture. And I think Arsenal are, they still have a little bit of a soft underbelly. I think, you know, if you can, if you can get a couple of goals... Uh, up against them quite early on, I think anything's possible. Um, incidentally, I think the game against them last year is is one of the you know the forgotten great games at Anfield, and and mainly because none of us were there. But Liverpool were incredible that night. It was the night that Jurgen Klopp famously uh, kicked off on Roy Keane after the game, um, which totally enjoyed um, because Liverpool were embodied by Sadio Mane, just men possessed. Uh, they just were. They they were they were completely swarming all over Arsenal, and then there's the Arteta thing at full time in terms of how do you stop them? You know, you put a full press on against them, and Van Dijk plays at sixty yards over to Salah, and they're out. So it'll be really interesting to see what Arsenal do. Whether they continue with a version of two up top, um, I'm not overly concerned about them from set pieces. I think, like we've touched on in part one, I think Liverpool's uh, Liverpool's sort of learning from the past few weeks before the international break around set pieces will be interesting to see if they implement anything differently. I think I think just being slightly technical for a minute, you watched, I watched the goal back of, uh, of Salah's breakaway um, today against Arsenal in that game, uh, his, first, his first in that game. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of that you forget about Wijnaldum uh, in terms of where he was in set pieces for Liverpool, in terms of marking that sort of front post zone. I think it has been a little bit of a problem for Liverpool, that zone, in terms of set pieces this season. I think um, Havertz is one that sticks in, in the mind of sort of no one yeah. no one blocking it or no one doing anything about it. So maybe if there is somewhere to to improve on for Liverpool, it's around sort of keeping an eye on that area and set pieces, see what they do. But yeah, I think I think it's one where if we're paired and um, I think it's got the makings for a really good game. Great. Uh, you excited for it, Kieran? Do you think it could be a good one for Liverpool? Good opposition for us? I'm excited for it because I want to get back to winning ways, John, to be honest. I mean, I think yeah. we touched on it before. After that West Ham game, it was the worst possible time. It always is if you lose a game to go to to go to go a break. So I'm looking forward to Liverpool trying to get back into it and find the rhythm. It, I, I agree. It, will, it has got the makings of a tasty fixture. I think if you won the last four games of the... So they're on a bit of a run. Yeah, they won't be in an eight. They've won, won six and drawn two of the last eight. So they're in, yeah, good so form. They are, they are in good form, considering that Arsenal in recent years haven't necessarily been able to put a bit of a run together. Actually. So, But yeah, I do think Liverpool have got the quality to, to, be, to beat them. I think we've got the um, the point we've made there about the set pieces. I don't think necessarily it's an Arsenal thing. I think it's 
I think we need to look at in general. It's a weakness that we have and West Ham exposed it. So it's obviously something that we need to work on. But Liverpool on the day uh, should be able to, you know, get four up in 19 minutes again, John. Probably still, <laughs> the best for, probably still the best 20 minutes of football I've ever seen from the Liverpool side. That, to be honest, it was, it was mesmerising. No, so yeah, that... I, think, I, do, I, do, I do think we'll beat them. I do think we'll get back to winning weight this weekend. Yeah, it's starting with that intensity uh, feels key. You know, the the, the last away game that they won was it was at Leicester. Uh, Phil and Arsenal sort of controlled the game from the off there and, and went sort of two and up. I mean, they'll have a job doing that against Liverpool. Um, I would argue in our quality, but it still shows that they're able to get on the front foot, you know, quickly. And we we just need to impose ourselves on this game uh, as quickly as possible. I feel we did what was promised about that day from our point of view is that the goalkeepers man of the match, so they still gave Leicester ample opportunity to get back into that game and Ramsdale's basically bailed them out with I think he made three or four really good saves was that one from the free kick which was on telly for about a week which was excellent and there was one yeah. second half when he gets I think he gets down really quite low and quick out to the feet in the same style Alisson does when he sort of just runs at someone's feet as they're about to hit it and he throws them into just completely disorientates them and they don't know what to do Ramsdale did that as well so I think there'll be chances for us I think when I look at Brighton and West Ham I can see what they had in them that was a problem for Liverpool and I'm not sure I don't look at Arsenal in the same way, to be perfectly honest. How do you look at them, Dan, in terms of you know the, the threat that they might pose us? Because they've got some some good young players. They've got some you know players who you know can run in behind, can can, can maybe hurt us, and do some similar things to to I guess what what uh, potentially sort of what um, what Brighton were able to 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 do, but also West Ham. Yeah, again, it's what it's what Mikel Arteta comes and plans to do with players like Smith Rowe, Saka, um, players who, who you could nominally say play in half spaces uh, in the second third areas. They could try and sit in like Brighton maybe did, and then you know roll that dice. But like I said, I think if Liverpool get two up in this game, I don't I don't see the same result occurring, and you know might might get clipped and end up with egg on my face, but it wouldn't be the first time. Been doing this long enough now to uh, to know the stuff like that can happen. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, you know, (laughs) you've got got an archive from me, Phil, over the years. (laughs) He's got an archive on everyone. I batter you. I batter everyone on that, mate. Don't worry about it. (laughs) So yeah, I mean, I I I think I think it's it's really interesting in terms of what what they want to do. Um, I don't I don't see a, a major threat in terms of. A sort of last line in terms of Arsenal. Obama Young, I think, can be managed between the centre half we've got. They can try and play between the space between centre half and full back. But I think we'll be on it. And I think we'll I think we'll be on it from West Ham still. And I think we'll be on it from the players getting a bit of a break and refresh. And like I say, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to have this break at this time now. I know that's the, the mentality, but I think to come back refresh from that game um get the plan in, in embedded over the next sort of 24 hours you know i think i think there's there's definitely a way in which if we go to nil up in this game i don't i don't see them coming back in the same way that brighton were able to steve brown's gonna be a talking to there um quite rightly me talking about arsenal and the threats talking about set pieces talking about you know why players with any said team talk should be like the old fergie spurs one lads it's fucking arsenal they are scarred since 2013 i think there is a bit of that care but also a bit of just also remembering how good we are really the west ham game might have been a bit disappointing you know but you know they'll be looking at us and thinking quality all over the pitch. Most Salah absolutely flying. Yeah, for me, I was out, which is a bit of a shame because he's got a great record against them. But you know, we still got Jotter and, and Mane. It's not a bad uh, from three, is it? Whoever he picks in midfield, you know, there'll, there'll be sort of quality there as well. And, and then obviously, you know, like we said before, you know, whoever you know, there's the, the left back options fine. Whoever he goes to, whoever he picks next to uh, Virgil at centre half, you'd be sort of fine with. We're, we're in a nice position, aren't we? The Reds, and you know they should be more worried about us than we are to them. Yeah, I think we've all been a little bit nice to Arsenal so far on this show. I mean, because they have put a little run of wins together, and usually they're shite, and they have been for a few years. You know what I mean? So inconsistent. But I think what results like that West Ham one does and that Bright one does, it just starts to put a little bit of like, oh no, we're not we're not going to be one of them, is it? You know what I mean? And, and mm. it do, it, you do feel it, you know what I mean? When you go 2 and up at Anfield, you end up walking away with the point. And that's not, yeah, the shouts don't, you know, that, that, that's not championship winning form and that's not how you win leagues and all them little, little, little comments start coming out. So 
it is good to remind yourself of the quality that we've got, John. You know what I mean? We've got Sal on the pitch, and 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 he's in he's in the form of his life. We've got you know the, the best goalkeeper on the on in the planet. So there's there's no matter what teams told us, we, we've got we've got the players there to to deal with it and punish teams. We've seen it with Man United. You know what I mean? That game where where it just clicked, and I know Man United was so poor, but Liverpool were fucking good on that day, like really, really good, like. So if we can get back to that, I don't think Arsenal, as I've said, if we all tune up in that game, I don't think we're going to um, see another repeat of what happened at Brighton. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Um, it's an interesting weekend, Phil. We've got that Leicester Chelsea game at half twelve, uh, which I think uh, a lot of people uh, will be will be watching. Uh, Liverpool fans, you know, from a point of view of hoping, you know, Chelsea might slip up there. Leicester been a funny team uh, this season, but you know, it's still uh, home at the King Power, and they've still got some good players. And yeah, there's a uh, couple of interesting three o'clock. So then, um, if Liverpool win, who knows? Maybe the Blues could do us a favour on Sunday as well. Rafa and the boys rock up um, to to Man City. Yeah. Um, could be nice uh, Sunday night, is what I'm saying. Looking at the table, it could, yeah. This is it. Like, I, I think Rafa Benitez has absolutely spent two weeks looking at that game, thinking about how he can do Pep Guardiola's heading. And I think it's <laughs> the perfect situation with Benitez where he gets two weeks to prepare for the game against a team where he's a massive underdog. It's like the kind of thing he thrives off, isn't it? Um, yeah, there's less to Chelsea. It's, it's not, not the question that, um, that both of them drop points this weekend. I think, I think Manchester City will win, but. I, I can see, I can you can see Leicester doing something. I think if Chelsea have a bit of an off day finishing wise, it seems to be that at the minute all they're doing is basically getting the full backs to score goals. And there's a question mark about how long you can do that for. And you can probably do it long enough to win a league title, but at some point it will stop. So hopefully it's this weekend and hopefully they sort of regress and it, we can make it a two horse race and it's just us and City. But, you know, I think that's probably stretching it a bit, isn't it? No, I think it is good. If it is going to be tight for a while, I think Dan and, and the three teams at the top, are, you know, are maybe dropping points sort of here and there, but but, but sort of all, all look strong, really. Yeah, I don't know how you're sort of feeling about it. You know, going into obviously, you know, the, a, a busy period. You know, you are you one who watches all the games, or are you sort of well, wait, wait, concentrate on ourselves and see what happens. Yeah, uh, at this moment, yeah, yeah, I'm sort of. I'm not doing the looking at the league table too studiously uh, and I never do really until the turn of the year. Um, I think that's maybe the last few years Tristan will be in and around it, um, barring last year, obviously, of course. Um, but then again, we were top of Christmas last year. So, you know, we, we're always uh, the turn of the year around where we need to be. And I think this season that's more prevalent than ever. I think I think every side, I think of every side, I mean, you know, City, Liverpool, and Chelsea, if if they're level on New Year's Day on points, that's absolutely fine. You know, that's if Liverpool were in two or three points of whoever's top, I'd say that's absolutely fine. I'd say yeah. that the, this isn't going to be a season for me where you know someone sort of put goes on the gas in terms of maybe dropping four points from now till the end of the season. I, I can't see it. I just think I think there's been enough of a of a body of evidence of of silly points dropped to show that there may be you know, a good a, a good suggestion that there could be anything between sort of six to ten points dropped from from any of those three hmm. from now till the end of the season, and someone could win the league on ninety points, um, for example, which I think I think is a strong possibility. So I think there will be I think there will be a, a desire for for Liverpool and City in particular to go foot on the gas, and I think seeing more teams having to go two games a week, a lot more will will test that metal and, and we'll show what what inevitably what both are made of in that sense Chelsea are just a bit of a weird one I can't work them out at all I just can't part of me is still really uh, anxious I guess is the wrong word to use but trepidatious about whether or not they can really just dog it uh, and dog their way to when the car who comes back to 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 getting to April and May from you know being right up there from winning one nil every week and um, you know, I, I wonder whether that is a possibility with them, but and I'm not too worried, I guess, is what I'm saying. I think I think that there will be a lot more margin for error this season than, than previous ones. I think you know, that makes a point there, Kieran, about the two games a week, and it's tough. And that's where us being in such a good position, the Champions League group really helps. We're, we're through already as top. You know, Klopp said, you know, he wants to win the games, he says it's a lot of money for the club, and you get that, but. 
there's one into win the games and need and two isn't there and they're very different things in terms of how you manage the squad and you know who you give sort of rest to when when it looks like they need them and the intensity of your player you know we're in a, a fantastic position, obviously, a, 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 an ideal winning position in that, cha- that Champions League group. And that allows us, just for this period, just to go full throttle on this league. Yeah, it definitely. Like, I mean, I think if we, you said there, there's a difference between must win and, 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 and wanting to win. If these were must win games, we'd be looking at these upcoming fixtures. And those niggles and injuries would be a, a lot more daunting. And, you know, yeah. the fact that we can, we can play some of the fringe players in, in the Champions League will benefit the rest of the season massively. And, 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 and you know, I'm sure Jürgen believes that as well. I, I, I agree with what he says. I want to still want to win the games. I think we all still want to win the games. But getting through them games without any more serious injuries is ideal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, finish up with Arsenal then. Um, we've got a score prediction from you all. Phil, what do you reckon? 3-1. 3-1 to Liverpool. Dan? Ah, fuck it. 5-0. Five 5-0? Nil. Five nil. Christ, uh, Dan's on the air already. Uh, Kieran? Dan convinced me before we'll go 2-0 up and he won't catch us, so I'm going to go 2-0. 2-0 and we're seeing the rest of the game out. Um, oh, that sounds good to me. I think I think Phil's uh, feels most likely to me. I think a 3-1 uh, but we shall see as long as Liverpool win. Uh, we're not too bothered, are we? Uh, listen, loads more across the Anfield Rap preview in this game. There'll be the team talk show and our audio subscription service tomorrow, which will be right after the end club's press conference uh, reacting to that. Uh, we've got a video preview out tonight that me and Rob Gutman have done and then tomorrow, uh, the Friday night, uh, which is our sit around the pub and look forward to the game. Uh, across the day on social media, there'll be loads of great stuff happening. Uh, by the Anfield Wrap in terms of the build-up and then straight after the game, post-match show, post-match pints, audio and video from L4, straight after the game by people in the ground who are hopefully celebrating a big Liverpool win. What more could you ask for? Make sure you're subscribing uh, to the Anfield Wrap, theanfieldwrap.com forward slash subscribe uh, to get stuck in and get all the content you need uh, coming up to and straight after that Arsenal game. It's a fantastic time uh, to be a Liverpool fan. It's a fantastic time to subscribe to the Anfield Wrap, we think. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, thanks a lot to Phil, to Dan and to Kieran. Hope you enjoyed that. Enjoy your weekend. Hope you enjoyed the inserts as well. Up the Reds.